<sighs> Hello, everybody. I hope you're having a beautiful day. There are many out there that are probably going to hear me read this in the future and be utterly confused. But as I've told you all before, you can think of me like David when he was a shepherd before he became a king. And for anybody else who needs further explanation, if you ever watch Sword in the Stone, you might also understand why I haven't wanted to do this. There are many reasons why I don't want to do this, but for the main reason is because I basically have unlocked a lot of things. And so I've experienced and witnessed a lot of things. I'm going to be 100% truthful. When I was a child, sometimes I run around saying certain things like I am or I'm Jesus and I got in a lot of trouble. So I kind of let it go for a long time because that was just first instincts. But now as an adult, now that I'm a grown man, and you can see on many of these videos, I've tried to place myself in the places of angels, warriors, and other places, but now it is time. So I'm going to read this. You can either accept this or not. It's up to you, because for the longest time I had trouble believing, but now that I, I am where I am, it all makes sense. Uh, the <laughs> This is kind of like a mind fuck. The one who is doesn't want to be not because I'm not thankful, but because for many reasons, I'm not a king. And so I'm sorry for what I just said. It's just not the type of stuff I'm into. I do not like being a super rich, telling people what to do kind of guy. <laughs> I like sitting on my couch playing video games and talking and enjoying people's company and going on actual, when I say adventures, I mean like learning and understanding new things. All right, I've stalled enough. Here we go. The revelation of who I am, which I am gave me to show his servants what must soon take place. I made it known by sending an angel to the servant, <clears throat> Yehohanan who testifies to everything he saw. <clears throat> that is the word of who I am and the testimony of who I am. Blessed is the one who reads the words of this prophecy out loud and blessed are those who hear it and take to heart what is written in it because the time is near. <sighs> you may see me saying one sometimes that's for a specific purpose. It's to raise my servant from the grave. We have the same name and to glorify the word and spirit to let people know I'm not to be fucked with and uh, and when it is written that the fear of who I am is the beginning of wisdom understand what I just wrote all right I'm not going to read the seven churches because that's just gonna go down a whole To the seven churches in the province of Asia, grace and peace be to you from him who is, who was, and who is to come. From the seven spirits before the throne, Adam, Ham, Moses, Joshua, Elijah, John, and Muhammad. I am now going to say their real names. The beginning of mankind, the language of Gies. Then you have Mentuhotep II, Amos, Akhenaten, Zoroaster, Yehohanan, and Muhammad. Also, the seven commandments. And the seven phrases that make up the body. Anybody who watched my last video, you will now see it says, do not bow and do not worship them. Making it seven. So, yeah. Making me the seventh angel. Do not take who I am in vain, which gave me the morning star, which led to me being 
<clears throat> which you all would call the living God, the firstborn of the fruits, who is a faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler of kings of the flesh. So when I say this, I keep telling you all, death in this book predominantly is talking about death to who I'm not and being born again away from the curse of the world. To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood, John, Yehohanan, or the covenant itself, and has been made to us a kingdom and priest to serve I am who I am. To him be glory and power forever and ever. Look, he is coming with the clouds, so let me edify. When I truly say this, I am talking about the blood the blood of the prophets and the Christ and the judges and everybody else or the apostles and the judges and everybody else since the time that the covenant was broken at the foundation of the world, but further from Moses, because Moses was the one that draws from the rivers and they left the Ten Commandments and Moses dead to him be glory and power forever and ever who I am. Look, he is coming with the cloud. He is coming from the mind. Every eye will see him, even those who pierce who I am. All the peoples of the flesh will mourn because of who I am. So shall it be. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says who I am, who is, who was, and who is Almighty, the Almighty. <clears throat> Yehohanan, your brother and companion in the suffering of the kingdom and the patient endurance of ours and who I am was on the island of Patmos because of the word of who I am and the testimony of who I am. On that day, I was in spirit and I heard behind me, so John or Juan. And that day behind me, I heard a loud voice like a trumpet, which said, write on a scroll what you see and send it to the seven churches. So I turned around to see the voice that was speaking to me and when I turned and saw the seven golden lampstands, the seven commandments among the lampstand was someone like the son of man, the beginning seven phrases that freed my soul, who I am, because who made the commands, who wrote the flint knife? You keep saying Joshua and Elijah and all them, and I'm telling you, I am the one that did any of this. Dressed in a robe, <sighs> reaching down to his feet. With a golden sash around his chest, the hair on his head was white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were like blazing fire. His feet were like bronze glowing in the furnace, and his voice was like the sound rushing of waters. In his right hand was seven stars, the seven commandments, and coming out of his mouth was a sharp double-edged sword, the sword of the mouth. His face were like the whole thing, which is like a sword. His face was like the sun shining in all its brilliance. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though I were not alive. Because it is written, thou shalt not bow, so why would I be bowing? But the fear sometimes take a hold when you first see. Then, but you are not to do that because I am peace, mercy, and forgiveness. Then who I am placed his right, my right hand on me and said, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. I am the first and last. I am the living one. I was dead in the kingdom of darkness. And now look, I am alive forevermore, just like the covenant. A representation of what I am doing is a representation of the covenant. And I hold the keys to death in Hades. So Peter was given the keys to the kingdom of the heart. So I'm going to tell you guys something. If you pay attention in the four, first four gospels, there's four men's names. Those men testified on behalf of John, Yehohanan, the one that carried the cross, remember Andrew, and then Peter ran. So then remember the traitor was given to Matthias, right? Matthew. So then later on down, that's one horn. Later down the line, there's another horn, Paul. I advise you all, if you're going to read Paul, use the, as in I am or who I am, and then realize you're reading Paul's words. So that's his who I am. And then if you line it up with your who I am, pay attention to how he's destroying wisdom making you crucify yourself with stupidity and destroying the spirit. He is a Pharisee. He even says he was. And if you take the word Jew out and think of it, what it is, the circumcision of the heart, then he's 
Anybody that's not balanced to their gods and their foolishness and their words is being persecuted through spirit by him and Peter. Write therefore what you have seen, what is now and what will take place later. The mystery of the seven stars which you saw in my right hand and the seven golden lampstands is this. The seven stars are the angels and those are the commandments. But if I treat this in real time, the seven archangels, I said their names. I kept trying to make myself a character and then I was told to stop playing. <laughs> Of the seven churches and the seven lampstands are the seven churches because I have examples of men when they say, oh, I can't speak for you. I have examples of what happened when men hang themselves in the field for money. Peter. And if you even take it even further, what's Judah? If you take the S and replace it with an H. Right. Because it's, it's Joshua. What is really Yoshua or Yehoshua, one of the two, Ye Yehovah. Right. But they play out these names and switch the stuff up. First the Semitic people, which is Shem, then Japheth, which is Europe. Okay, so this stuff right here, the seven angels, what he's actually writing, I'm not. So I'm here to reveal the mystery and reveal my kingdom or who I am. So I'm just going to go ahead and get to it. The throne in the heart. After I looked and there before me was a door standing open in the heart. And the voice, I, I had a vision one time <laughs> that um, I don't know where it came from or what was going on. But this is one of those. I was sitting on the couch, but I could actually see what was going on. And I would say it's my ego because I saw myself open a door and there was light on the outside. So all I saw was the light. But then I opened the door and it was a huge room that was like infinitely big. And it had like waters at the bottom. So I was falling. I was like, whoa. And it was like splash. And then all of a sudden, I just stood up and started like walking and buildings and stuff started growing. It was <laughs> amazing. And the voice I had first heard speaking to me like a trumpet said, come up here and I will show you what must take place after this. At once I was in the spirit. I was inside of who I am. And there before me was a throne and the heart was some one sitting on it. And the one who sat there had the appearance of Jasper and Ruby, a rainbow that shone like an emerald and circled the throne. Surrounding the throne were 24 other thrones, the 24, the 12 apostles and the 12 uh, minor prophets and seated on them were 24 elders. They were dressed in white and had crowns of gold on their heads. From the throne came flashes of lightning and rumblings of pearls and thunder. In front of the throne, seven lamps were blazing. The seven commandments. These are the seven spirits of who I am or actually these are the first seven commands, because at first I told you it was the three commandments from lore, the Ark of the Covenant. But then when I actually phrased them, it became six, the first two phrases. And then it was the four archangels, the fir first four commands. Well, then when I investigated further and what led to this, I realized, oh, my goodness, there is a seventh. It's thou shall not bow and thou shall not worship them. So I was like, oh, the seven spirits. And I represented them like this. Adam, who was the beginning. But then you have Ham. Um, so then Adam needed redemption, right? So then you have my flesh being used, which was the seventh. And I'll explain what I mean in a second. You have I am who I am. I am sent me, which has Ham in it. If you take the H and Ham and turn it to its side, it's I am. <laughs> so then you have Moses, the drawing from the rivers, the Egyptian. And then you have Joshua, also the Egyptian, who um, was don't worship any other gods. He tore down everything and brought back the Aten. And then you have um, Zoroaster or Elijah. And he's like the um, no idols under the earth and sea and in the heavens. Remember, he fought all the prophets of Baal and tore everything down. Zoroaster with his prophets. And then you have um, do not bow to them. Right. Because John the Baptist, he went about to none of their gods and he did what he did to him was triumphant. And then you have Muhammad. Don't worship them. Jesus isn't a God. It lives through the spirit. This is so prophetic. I can't believe this, this is amazing. See, I love the knowledge, the wisdom, the understanding, the helping others and healing. I don't like the idea of being a king and a God as in I rule you guys. So I'm bringing freedom. I am mercy, freedom and salvation. But, you know, I bring the covenant, the Ten Commandments originally. But I'll leave them at the end of each of these videos. These are the seven spirits. of who, Oh, and the last one, the angel that throws his vial in the air. Do not take who I am in vain. Do not take the name of vain. The day of Sabbath, right? Keep the day of Sabbath holy. That's prophetic. And so um, 
if you pay attention, and I'm going to explain how, I'm going to explain a lot of this in this. So the seven spirits of who I am. Also, in front of the throne, there was what looked like a sea of glass, clear as crystal. And so it's basically a mirror. Once you get the name, you don't have to accuse anybody else, but then begin your journey on the inside. But then as you go and live your life, you do what the most high leads you to do. And then from there you go. In the center around the throne were four living creatures and they were covered with eyes front to back. The first of the living creatures is like a lion. So I will say this is like Joshua or Judah. The second was like an ox. I will say this is like um Okay, so I'm sorry for what I just said. I'm going to take that back. The first of the living creatures was like um, a lion, which I say is like Zoroaster. The second was like an ox, which I say is like John. The third had a face like a man, which is I like, is, which is like I say who I am because I came for Greece. And then. The first creature was like a lion. I say this is like Babylon. The second was like an ox. I say it's like Persia. The third has a face like a man. I say it's like Greece. And the fourth was like a flying eagle. So let me explain, which is like Rome. There are beautiful Jews or Babylonian Talmudians, the Jewish people that is in their society. There is beautiful Muslims that have been patient and been waiting and fighting this buffoonery and are not murderers and been following righteously. The third had a face like a man, Greece. Remember I said, I'm like, <clears throat> I'm coming back for Greece. Christianity, I'm trying to reform it. And the fourth was like Rome. The ones who did fly over this buffoonery and were true Christians and didn't get entangled by the world's stupidity. Each of the four living creatures had six wings. That's also prophetic as well. You know what I'm saying? Because each of us can only really bring the six commandments. Only the user or the person outside can bring the seventh or and or we are the seventh. Don't take who I am in vain with eyes all around, even under its wings. Day and night, they never stop saying, holy, holy, holy. So once this journey began and I read the revelation, I started hearing holy, holy, holy when good things started happening in my consciousness. I was like, ooh, I love this. I am who I am, who was and is and always to come. Whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who sits on the throne and who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before who I am and worships who I am and worships who I am forever and ever. So remember, I say this is like a priesthood for all of us. They're all our servants to help who I am live. So you all should hear that, not just saying just me. And so, you know, this is a beautiful story when you look at it righteously. You are worthy. I am who I am. To receive glory and honor and power for you created all things and by your will, they were created and have their being <clears throat> the scroll and the Ten Commandments or Moses and the Ten Commandments. Then I saw in the right hand of him who sits on the throne with the scroll writing on both sides with writing on both sides and sealed with the seven seals, the seven commandments. And I saw a mighty angel proclaiming with a loud voice. Who is worthy to break the seals and open the scroll? But no one in the heart or on the flesh or underneath the in the refinery could open or on the inside could open and look at it. I wept and wept because no one was found worthy to open the scroll and look at it. Then one of the elders said to me, Don't weep. See the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has triumphed, and he is able to open the scrolls with his seven seals. Then I saw a lamb looking as if it had been slain. So remember the Ten Commandments. And now I am here again, standing in the center of the throne, encircled by the four living creatures. Each of the men got this, had it. They were awake. And remember, even Muhammad said he saw Gabriel in a cave, the Ten Commandments in a cave. Moses, that's funny. And prophetic. Then I saw a lamb looking as if it had been slain. Um, the lamb had seven horns and seven eyes. The seven commandments, and which is the horns and eyes. Or if you look at this even deeper, now listen, this is prophetic. The seven horns on the head are like the first seven phrases of who I am. And the seven eyes are the seven spirits of who I am sent throughout all the flesh. He went back, or you could look at this as the seven archangels before who I am. 
he went and took the scroll from the right hand of him who sat on the throne. And when he had taken it, the four living creatures and the 24 elders before the lamb fell down before the lamb. Each one had a harp and they were holding golden bowls full of incense, which are prayers of I, who I am's people. And they sang a new song saying, you are worthy to take the scroll and open its seals because you were slain and with your blood you you purchase for who I am the Ten Commandments or the Covenant persons from every tribe and language and people and nation that's why it's called the body of the Lamb the body of Christ it's not one man it's everybody who bared this you have made them look to be a kingdom of priests to serve who I am and they will reign on the flesh then I, this is the new heaven and new earth basically then I looked and heard a voice of many angels numbering thousands upon thousands, ten thousands upon ten thousands. That's prophetic. Ten. They encircled the throne and the living creatures and elders. And a loud voice they were saying, Worthy is um, who I am, who was slain to receive power. So, I, guys, I'm talking from the spirit, so don't look at my. To receive power and wealth, bear this for who I am, please. Thank you. And honor and glory and praise. Then I heard every creature in the heart and on the flesh and under the flesh and the deep conscious and on the sea and all these books that is in them saying to him who sits on the throne and who I am be praise and honor and glory and power forever and ever. The four living creatures said, thank you. And the elders fell down and worshiped who I am. I watched the lamp open the first of the seven seals. Then I heard one of the four living creatures say in a voice like thunder, Come. I looked, and before me was a white horse. Um, I am who I am. I am sent me. Its rider held a bow and was given a crown, and he rode as a conqueror and went bent on conquest. And when who I am opened the second seal, I heard a second living creature say, Come. Then another horse came out, a fiery whirlwind red one its rider was given power to take peace from the flesh and to make people of the flesh destroy each other so that way the user is safe to him was given a large sword i am the one who freed you from the land of egypt from the bondage of slavery you are to put no other god um, from the bondage of slavery when the lamb opened the third seal i heard the third living creature say come and i looked and there before me was a black horse, and its rider was holding a pair of scales in its hand. Then I heard what sounded like a voice among the four living creatures saying, Look, two pounds of wheat for a day's wages is six pounds <laughs> on the sixth day of barley for a day's wages. Do not damage the oil of wine. So the first two phrases are about to unlock the rest. And on the sixth day, this happened. Um, so you are to have no other gods before who I am. Um, when the lamb opened the fourth seal I heard a, vo a fourth voice a living creature say come I looked and there before me was a pale horse its rider was named death and Hades and following behind him they were given power over a fourth of the flesh to kill by the sword of the mouth famine and plague to kingdoms of Pharaoh's kingdom on the flesh and so Thou shalt have no idols under in the heavens, in the heart, the earth, the flesh, or the sea. These deep books. When he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slain because of the word of who I am. They called out in a loud voice. How long, so far? How long, who I am? Holy and true, until you judge the inhabitants of the flesh and avenge our blood. <laughs> and each of them was given a white robe, and they were told to wait a little longer. Okay, until the. Uh, hope, who I am, please. This cannot be hope. This is your heart. Their brothers and sisters were killed by the sword just as they did. Then I watch as he opened the sixth seal. Do not bow down to them or worship them, for I am jealous and will not tolerate your affection for any other gods.
do not worship them or do not bow down to them. The fifth one, and do not worship them, for I am jealous, like a husband for its wife, and will not tolerate your affection for any other gods. There was a great, great earthquake, and the sun turned black like sackcloth made of gold hair, and the whole moon turned blood red, all the long wisdom and the light from before, and the prof and the prophets and all the others that didn't follow the covenant fell to the flesh, and no longer manipulated. And created clouds of destruction in the mind and heart for us to grovel and destroy ourselves on. As the fig trees drop from a tree when shaken by a strong wind, the heart receded like a scroll being rolled up, and every mountain and island was removed from its place. Then the kings of the flesh, and the princes and generals, and the rich and the mighty, and everyone else, both slave and free, hid in caves among the rocks of the mountains. They tried to find the religions, or they tried to find the religions and hide within themselves and try to figure it out. They call to the mountains and the rocks fall on us and hide us with your wisdom for the face of him, for the face of who I am and from the wrath of the Ten Commandments for the great day of their wrath has come upon and who can withstand it? Remember on the seventh day who I am will rest. The 144,000 see you and Okay, give me a second, because this... <sighs> After this, I saw four angels, the four archangels, standing at the four corners of the flesh. Joshua, Elijah, John the Baptist, and Muhammad. Uh corners of the flesh holding back the four winds of the flesh to prevent any wind from blowing on the land um, or the books or any of the nourishment shade leaves i saw another angel coming up from the east having the seal of who i am he called out with a loud voice to the four angels who had been given power to harm <clears throat> the land and the sea the these religions and their books do not harm the land or sea or trees until we put the seal on the foreheads of the servants of who I am. Then I heard the number of those who were sealed, 144,000 of the tribes of Israel. The tribe of Judah, 12,000 were sealed. The tribe of Reuben, the tribe of Gad. The new 12 commandments I put at the end, the 12 tribes basically. The tribes of Gad, tribes of Asher, tribes of Naphtali, tribes of Manasseh, tribes of Simeon, tribes of Levi, tribes of Issachar, tribes of Zebulun, tribes of Joseph, tribes of Benjamin. After this, I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and before, <clears throat> standing before who I am and the Ten Commandments. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands. Um, and they cried out in a loud voice, salvation belongs to who I am, who sits on the throne and to the Ten Commandments. And all the angels were, salvation belongs to I am and who sits on the throne and to who I am. All the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They fell down on their face faces before the throne and worshiped who I am saying, yay, praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honor and power and strength be to who I am forever and ever. Thank you. Then one of the elders asked me in these white robes, who are they and where did they come from? I answered, sir, you know, and he said, these are they who have come out of great tribulation for they have washed their robes and made them white. And the blood of the lamb that manifests into a lot of martyrs. They are before who I am. And they serve me day and night in the temple. The stone, the Ten Commandments. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. And never again will they hunger. And never again will they thirst. And the sun will not beat on them. Nor any scorching heat for who I am. At the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will lead them to springs of living water. And I, who I am, will wipe away every tear from their eyes. 
when who I am open the seventh seal. Do not take who I am in vain. I will not leave him guiltless who take my name in vain. There was a silence in the heart for about half an hour. When I awakened and read this, I realized that I didn't want to be king anymore. So many people murdered so long for me. For what? Who am I? <laughs> so who I am won't let the children be taken in vain. And no one will stop me. And I saw the seven angels who stand before who I am. And the seven trumpets were given to them. Another angel who had a censer who couldn't stay, who came and stood at the altar, he was given much incense to offer. With the prayers of all my people, <laughs> the golden altar for the throne. The smoke of the incense together with the prayers of who I am and my people went up before who I am in the angel's hand. Then the angel took the censer and filled it with fire from the altar, and he hurled it on the flesh. And there came pearls of thunder, and rumblings and flashes of lightning, and an earthquake. The flesh quaked. So this is um this is the seven commandments now. The seven angels who had the seven trumpets and prepared to sound them. The first angel sounded his trumpet. Thou shalt not kill or rape. And there came hell and fire mixed with blood, and there hurled down on the flesh. And a third of the flesh was burned up. A third of the trees of the things that they built because of rape and murder was burned up. And all the green grass was burned up. The second angel sounded his trumpet, Thou shalt not steal. And something like a huge mountain, all the blaze was thrown into the, into the book. A third of the sea turned into blood, and a third of the living creatures in the sea died, and a third of the ships were destroyed. Then the third angel sounded his trumpet, Thou shalt not um, bear false witness. And a great star blazing like a torch fell from the heavens, and a third of the rivers and the springs of the water, and the name of the star was Wormwood, because now it was bitter once we see what these false prophets were teaching us, some of them. A third of the waters turned bitter, and many of the people died from the waters that had become bitter. The fourth angel sounded his trumpet. Um, thou shalt not um, covet for thy neighbor house. And a third of the sun was struck, and a third of the moon, and a third of the stars, so that a third of them turned dark. And a third of the day was without light, and also a third of the night. And I watched as the eagle was flying in midair, calling aloud, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the flesh, because of the trumpet's blast about to be sounded by the other three angels. And the fifth angel sounded his trumpet, and I saw a star that fall, had fallen from the sky to the earth. Thou shalt... Um, Thou shalt not commit adultery. And so if you pay attention, look at this. Samuel, which I said is the body of the false prophets, then all the kings that raped these men and women through the flesh, and then Peter and Paul, who Peter took John. If you pay attention to Acts and read Acts and, and you read all of Paul's letters, they both took the garments of something and raped a man's garment and didn't know what they was doing and destroyed. Thou shalt not commit adultery. With who I am. Peter couldn't step out of the boat. So he was sinking in this religion. Because he was standing in John's boat. And couldn't figure it out. And if you even pay attention to that. On the fifth day. Which I say is like John the Baptist. Peter and Paul took these people's stuff. This man's stuff. And a star fell from the sky. Because they was committing adultery with who I am. Themselves. The most high. And doing buffoonery. The star was given the key to the shaft of the bottomless pit, right? Um, I'm giving you the keys to heaven, kingdom of heaven, right? This Peter, he, who was called who I'm not multiple times and who was grabbing the sword, violent like the Catholics, 
And then he was fighting with Paul, which manifested into the Thirty Years' War, the Protestants versus the Catholics, two violent religions that spread throughout Europe. When he opened the abyss, smoke rose from it like the smoke from a gigantic furnace, and the sun and sky were darkened by the smoke of the abyss, and out of the smoke locusts came down to the flesh and were given power, that of scorpions of the flesh, and they were told not to harm the grass of the flesh or any tree or tree, but only those people who do not have the seal of who I am on their foreheads. They were not allowed to kill them, but only to torture them for five months for half a completion until the agony they suffer was like a sting of the scorpion when it strikes. During those days, people will seek death and will not find it. So if you pay attention even further, after Roman, the Roman Catholic Church, nobody was able to be drawn from the rivers because you remember the Pharisees and it was talking about Moses. But after that, it was a rat. The kingdom was shut up through violence, just like how they said it was. And they will long to die, but death will elude them. The locusts look like horses and prepare for battle on their heads, all because they committed adultery with the Most High and created religions. Look at all this that's being created. On their heads, they were something like the crowns of gold, and on their faces resemble human faces. The Greeks, see? And their hair was like woman's hair. And um, so they spoke from the flesh's perspective and not from the most high. And their teeth were like lion's teeth. They used Judah and they had breastplates like Leviathan of iron and like Memor and Job. And the sound of their wings had, was like the thundering of many horses. So remember, like the thunders, they were flashing <clears throat> and they were running fast. Were they not carrying destruction? And they had tails with stingers like scorpions. And then their tails had the power to torment. Oh, you're going to go to hell. Oh, you're going to go to hell until completion. And they had the king over them, the king of the abyss, Peter and Paul, the false. They speak like their father, whose name is Abaddon in Greek is Apion, the destroyer. The first woe is past. The other two woes are coming. The sixth angel sounded his trumpet. And I heard a voice coming from the four horns of the golden altar that is before who I am. Honor thy father and mother, which is like what Muhammad is saying over and over, right? Jesus is not a God. He's a prophet or John was, and they beheaded his story and crucified John. How can you find rest if you're committing adultery with who I am and following everybody else's buffoonery? Israel's following the ways of the world. Israel's following the ways of the world. He said to the sixth angel who had the trumpet, release the four angels who are bound at the great Euphrates River. Right. John, Joshua, um, Elijah or <laughs> Joshua, Eliza, Joshua, Elijah, John and Muhammad, the four angels who have been kept ready for this very hour, day and month and year were released to kill a third of mankind. The number of mounted troops was twice 10,000 times 10,000. And so it's complete. That's that's prophetic because it's completion. But then it's twice the first two commandments that unlocks any of this. And as I've told you, if I am the seventh bringing completion, then the first four are the archangels. Um, their breastplates and uh, their breastplates were fiery red, dark blue and yellow as sulfur. And the heads of the horses resembled the heads of the lions. So they basically took these men's words. Right. So if you pay attention to this, um, they took these men's words. And basically sent out armies of destruction. But Muhammad tried to battle this afterwards, if that makes sense. The horses and riders, I saw in my visions. So if you see what the Ottomans did, they went back and tried to destroy the Pope. But then they took their words and became corrupt from it and created the Caliphate in Islam. I keep telling y'all, I give reverence many times to Persia and um, Iran and all these people, our forefathers from Islam. I may have words against them but if you pay attention to a lot of my videos i don't really say too much about islam besides their murder and violence they are brilliant man all this stuff about mathematics and numbering systems that came from egypt and persia and iran and different ancient men the heads of the horses resembled heads of the lions so they were saying they were judah too and out of their mouths came fire because boy what they did to the prophet muhammad is ridiculous smoke and sulfur a third of mankind was killed by the three plagues of fire and the smoke and the sulfur that came out of their mouths and the power of the horses that was in their mouths and their tails for their tails were like snakes having heads with which they inflict injury the wisdom they took the wisdom you're supposed to take the wisdom and to be righteous with it but now because of the world now you have to battle all this stuff and i'm gonna teach you how 
The rest of mankind who were not killed by these plagues did not repent of the work of their hands, and they did not stop worshiping demons and idols of gold, silver, bronze, and stone, which is apparent today. Now, if I look up, everybody's talking about the mark of the beast, you can't buy and sell, but try to live your life and not be religious. What do they do? Jesus Christ, Yeshua, it, it, um, Israel, it, Islam. You see what I'm saying? You can't buy or trail or say or do anything without the religions, the four beasts and Egypt and wood and idols that cannot see nor hear nor walk. The Bible says the, the cross, the, the, the holy tabernacle in this man's church, nor that they repent of their murders, their magic arts or their sexual immorality because they've been murdering the word and the spirit for a long time, which manifests today into them being pagans in la la land. The angel with the little scroll. Then I saw another mighty angel coming down from the heart. He was robed in a cloud with the rainbow above the, his head. So look, this after the sixth seal, this is Muhammad coming down, talking to me from the heart. Jesus is not a God. He was robed in a cloud with the rainbow above his head. The seven thunders roared something. Holy shit, this is prophetic. And the angels would come down on Son of Man. What the f he was robed in a cloud with a rainbow above his head. His face was like the sun. And I've read Muhammad's words and I've met a lot of Muslims. You guys are being assholes. And now that I'm awakened and can see outside of the perspective of Greece and Rome, I can see what it is. And his legs were like fiery pillars. He was holding a little scroll and he has kept the people of Islam bound and so the righteous not committing adultery with the most high. Even if they say Allah and stuff, what did John even say? Blasphemy is against the son of man. But who I am is here now. And now I'm here with the word and the truth. He was holding a little scroll which lay open in his hand. He planted his right foot on the sea and his left foot in the land. And he gave a loud shout like the roar of a lion. Jesus is in a car. And Zoroaster resurrected. Holy shit, this is prophetic. Like from the tribe of Elijah, when he shouted, the voices of the seven thunders spoke. And when the seven thunders spoke, the seven commandments, I was about to write, but I heard a voice from the heart saying, seal up what the seven thunders have said. Um, do not write it down. Um, then who I am um, had seen standing, but I'm here to reveal. So it's just basically saying this. He was the one that was doing this. He is a mighty man, but I don't want him turned into a god. I don't want them to do what they did with Muhammad, what they did to John, if that makes sense. So Jesus taught them not to kill, and Muhammad was teaching, or you know what I mean. John was basically saying don't kill, which is what I say all the time, and Muhammad is saying don't worship idols like Elijah, which is what I'm saying all the time. The manifestation of all is crazy. I was about to write, but I heard a voice in the heart say, seal up what the seventh thunder said. So the seven first phrases agree and the seven commandments agree. Jesus isn't a God. <sighs> then the angel I had seen standing on the sea and on the land raised his right hand to the heart and he swore by him. Now you see, I have different videos called you hand in the revealer and all types of information. But if you pay attention to the whole journey, you will see how I was led to this point and how I'm clear once I don't take who I am in vain and I'm merciful and learn slowly over time. This is basically the same as them in the wilderness. They wanted to learn it all at once. People go, I got to go to these books. I got to learn from these prophets. I got to. But who I am has been guided from the heart. I am right. Who I am. And manna was brought down each time until I was led out of the wilderness. And he swore by him who lives forever and ever, who created the heart and all that is in them and the earth. The flesh that is all that is in it, and the sea and all these books that all is that is all that is in it. There will be no more delay. But in the days when the seventh angel <laughs> is about to sound his trumpet, may the mystery of who I am be accomplished, just as he announced his servants and the prophets. Then the voice that I had heard from the heart spoke unto me once more go and take the scroll that lies in the hand of the angel who is standing from the sea and the land. So when I took the <laughs> so when I took, went to the angel and asked him to give me the little scroll, he said to me, take it and eat it. <sighs> and when I ate the Ten Commandments, because this has been a perpetual system being passed down, 
And when I ate the Ten Commandments without the names of any gods on there, nothing grabbed me the way it did. Moses truly drew from the rivers and Ham built the foundation and Adam was the one that was transgressed. I'm telling y'all. Y'all y'all keep saying y'all are looking for crucifixions and evidence and all stuff. I give y'all history and edification. And I found basically everything and a lot of stuff. But what I'm saying is <laughs> what I'm saying is the the point of saying that is that I am who I am. There you go. I took the little scroll from the angel's hand and ate it and tasted it sweet at first because I was like, yes, yeah, I'm the most high. And when I was being cleansed on the inside, excuse my language, oh my fucking goodness. That shit tore me out, but made me power. It made me who I am. Then I was told, you must prophesy again about many peoples, nations, languages, and kings. Two witnesses. These two to me, and I'm going to explain something real quick. The two witnesses to me are, in this point in time, are Elijah and John. Okay? If you look at Moses, he was redeemed, so to speak, by, I'm not saying by Joshua, but yeah, he led them out of the promised land. And so, if you pay attention to this, Joshua is technically like the Judah, the tribe of Judah, if you really want to, if you will. Yeshua, Yehoshua, whatever the name would have transliterated to back then, which means Joshua or Kenneton, after dealing with Ah Moses' blunder that they did with him, what he did was he brought back the Aten or Atenism, which is 10 IMs. Actually, that's super prophetic. <laughs> so anyways, the point is, as in history, he had a son named Tukumaten, which I said was like Saul. Well, then after him, he had, after him, Tukumaten tore down all the stuff that he did. He loved his father, but he was advised by A. Haram Hub and all these different people. Well, for some reason, Tatumakin died, which is like Saul, and then A. and Haram Hub and all the people are like Samuel. People and prophets advising pharaohs and kings and doing buffoonery. Well, then, because of this, what ends up happening is they resurrect a Ramses. And if you look at the list of pharaohs, Ramses took over. He became Goliath. Well, in the midst of this, so then in the midst of this, um, you have David and Solomon, who are like Sunesis, who I believe wrote the Psalms and all that stuff. He brought back the Amun, the Most High, and then he built a city. Well, then you have Amenemop, who is his son, who wrote the instruction of Amenemop and was writing philosophies and wisdom and all that. So it's like David and Solomon. So in real time, what you're looking at is this is like the prophecy of Judah and Samar. You have Joshua, who had... At first, he had his real son, or which was still Pharaoh's, which was Tatumakin, which is Saul, which is Ur. Then I say David is like Onan. And then I say Amenemope, or Onan, is like Sunesis, or David. And then Shela is like um, Amenemope. So if you look, they took David out of it, but then Solomon lived on. With all his psalms and everything, with all his songs and all that stuff, all his wisdom. But then they renamed him in history. But then even they wouldn't let him build the temple. And so then the Semitic people took over. So if you pay attention to that, that's like Joshua's first three sons. They were pharaohs. Well, then if you look at that, the pharaohs were taken away. And then he had two sons. He had Elijah and John the Baptist or Zoroaster and Yehohanan. Both of these men had 12 minor prophets afterwards, and they have four major prophets or four major gospels. So if you pay attention to this, Elijah was like the Scarlet Prince. Him and Muhammad came first. And then John the Baptist is like Perez, John and Juan, which Juan, which Juan is like a Hispanic name. That's really prophetic and funny. So and then I would be the heir to the throne, so to speak. And when I say that, just simply redeeming I am, which brings the completion. So the two witnesses in the story are like Zara and Perez, Elijah and John. It's the Torah and all that, which is Moses and Joshua, the redemption of them. And then you have the Old Testament and the New Testament, the prophets and the apostles. 
I was given a reed like a measuring rod and was told, go measure the temple of who I am in the altar with its worshipers, but exclude the outer court. Do not measure it because it has been given over to the Gentiles. So all these religions and stories and all this buffoonery in this book, take what you will to survive and understand why I'm telling you why these certain men are angels and understand what their stories mean. Um, they will trample on the holy city for 42 months. And so in essence, the real witnesses is, is the word and the spirit. Um, the word was crucified and then our spirits was crucified, if that makes sense. So look at this for 42 months. That's 1260 days. So I'm going to show you guys something really quickly. Um, a Kenneton who or, or Joshua came in the 1300s. See, and then from that time. From the time of Joshua, you have John the Baptist or Yehohanan, Yehohanan. This guy came around 70 AD, about the time Peter erupted and started preaching on social. Yeah, right. Whatever. So anyways, that's 1260. That's the 1260 day prophecy. Well, if you take 42 times 30, that's 1260 again. So that's the time of them being in the wilderness till John. Right. And then remember the all the law, the prophets till John do unto others as you would do unto yourself. So then John comes. He comes out the wilderness, takes the sword to the beast's head. And then they go back in the wilderness for another 1260 years. So when did Rome make Catholicism, make Christianity, the religion of the empire, 300 AD? Some will say 318, some will say 350, some will say three, whatever. So if you take that plus 1260 years, when did Martin Luther start protestantism the 1500s that's 1200 almost 1260 years i'm telling y'all so then it really was like 1280 i mean 1580 but if you pay attention it really started in 313 so that's literally 1260 years literally through word and spirit so that's freaking crazy man. um and I'll appoint my two witnesses, the word and the spirit, which lived out through Elijah and John. Um, and they will prophesy for 1260 days, cloth and sackcloth. They are the two olive trees, the two lamp stamps. They stand before who I am of the flesh. If anyone tries to harm them, fire comes from their mouths and devours their enemies. This is how anyone or you could say Moses and Joshua together or who I am. And I'm not saying I'm Moses and Joshua. I'm saying basically the covenant, the ones who redeemed. This is how anyone who wants to harm them must die. The fires that don't consume comes and consumes them. They have the power to shut up the heart so that it will not rain during the time. So what they do for all this time, oh, return, oh, Messiah, oh, return, oh, return. From the time Zoroaster um, through spirit was battling the four beasts, Babylon, Persia, Greece, and Rome until the time John the Baptist was battling Rome and those beasts through the spirit because they all mixed together. They all worship the Lord God now. And even a lot of Islam is talking about Yeshua. I'm telling you, um, they have the power to set up the hearts so that it will not rain during the time they are prophesying. And they have the power to turn the waters into blood and to strike the flesh with every kind of plague as often as they want. Now, when they have finished their testimony, the beast that comes up from the abyss will attack them and they will overpower and kill them. So what happened after Zoroaster, all the prophets was getting murdered. And what happened after John, the beast came out of the pit into perdition for the allotted time. And I just brought up Martin Luther and the Protestants. Rest in peace to William Tyndale, because that dude fought the Pope and got murdered because of it. And he prophesied. He prophesied about my coming, a boy that will one day know the sword better than the Pope. And Martin Luther King, rest in peace, my two little witnesses. Um, and nobody was able to touch them. And they lived on through spirit. And Martin Luther King, I saw his dream one time. with, And, and it's in some of my videos I talk about it. The lamb that was standing next to me, I was singing a song with a guitar. And I looked at a lamb next to me, a huge one. And I saw all these people of every color, creed, race, religion. It didn't matter what they was, all humanity. It was all holding hands in a huge mountain. Um, their bodies will lie in the public square of the great city, which is figuratively called Sodom and Egypt, Canaan and Egypt, where also there where also who I was crucified, the Ten Commandments or the covenant for three and a half days. Some people of every people, three and a half. Oh, shit, that's prophetic. 
from 50, from 1500 BC to 1500 AD, and then 500 years or 400 years in bondage, Africans being slaves. Holy crap! Every people, tribe, language, and nation will gaze on their bodies. Now everybody has the Bible, and they refuse them burial. The inhabitants of the flesh will glow over them. Basically acting in that time about Jesus is the king God. Jesus is the king not taking regard to any of the body. Celebrate and will celebrate by sending each other gifts because of those two prophets had tormented those on the flesh. Oh, you're going to go to heaven for listening to King Jesus. Oh, you're going to go to heaven listening to King God and Allah and Hashem. But after three and a half days, the breath of life from who I am entered them. Oh, my goodness. Sometimes. When, just be patient. I'm with you. <sighs> and they stood up on their feet and terror struck those who saw them. Then they heard a loud voice from the heart saying, come up here. And they went into the heart in the cloud. And while their enemies looked on. So basically, if you really pay attention to this, I told you all Moses is the one that will judge you. Basically, these different prophets have been going up into the head, the heart, through the body and waiting. And at the lot of time, y'all basically are mock tormented and torn down and then if you are tormenting yourself they're not going to help they just sit back and like how you left them dead in the streets they're basically like okay so imagine i come to you and say jesus isn't god god isn't god and all that stuff what are people going to do they attack so how much more of the consciousness trying to warn itself at that very hour there was a severe earthquake and a tenth of the city that's uh the ten commandments tore the flesh apart and seven thousand people since the time of completion the seven days or the seven commandments destroyed everything else um, and the survivors were terrified and gave glory to who I am in the heart. The second woe has passed and the third woe is coming. The seventh trumpet. Um, keep the day of rest holy. You guys go back to this buffoonery like Sarah who turned or like the woman who turned around and turned to a pillar of salt or like how it's written. They will follow their father in the pit. Go ahead. But all I can do is say keep the day of rest holy. And in all honesty, once you get rest, keep it holy. And this last thousand years of the prophecy, because it said for seven time periods, Nebuchadnezzar, all that's involved with the statue and everybody else is going to be torn down until glory is given to the sovereign Lord on the last day. The seven, uh, then the kingdom of who I am or the kingdom of the world has become a kingdom of who I am and of the Messiah, the Ten Commandments, and he will reign forever and ever. And the 24 elders who were seated on their thrones before who I am fell on their face ships and worshiped who I am saying. So basically, I don't want to say Moses, but he's the one that brought the Ten Commandments. So, I mean, you guys can do what you will. But in my heart, it keeps just basically saying the Ten Commandments. And the 24 elders who were seated on their thrones before who I am fell to their face ship and faces and worship who I am saying. We give thanks to you who I am, who I am. The one who was, who is who was because you have taken your great power and have begun to reign. The nations were very angry and your wrath has come. The time has come for judging who I'm not and rewarding your servants, the prophets and your people who revere your name, both great and small for destroying those who destroy the flesh for then who I am's temple and the heart was open. And within the temple was the Ark of the covenant was seen the Ark of the covenant and there came flashing lightning, flashes of lightning, rumblings, peals of thunder, and an earthquake and a severe hailstorm. Okay, so this right here, I am simply revealing this, and it's who I am's job to go from there to whatever. So the dragon is Pharaoh. This is why this is a sneaky algorithm. Whoever wrote this book or put all these different men's words together and then put it in a book, which I say is like the Pope and the Vatican and all them other people and Christianity. The, the serpent is wisdom. Unrefined, it's a beast. Any wisdom unrefined, it's a beast. If you go start typing in a Google search bar, anything's going to pop up. Same with the mind. If you give your mind just random anything and let it sit there, it's going to grow stupidity in the dark. So basically what's happening is they're putting an algorithm to, and Adam is our spirit. It's basically the spirit of man. And then the flesh is Eve, the woman. They're basically putting new wisdom into our head. 
which is basically the wisdom they're giving us, the words, and then the dragon becomes the Lord God. And I'm explain why. Because even that's a word. God is from Germanic paganism, from Gudan, Guthis, Gud. So what's happening is at first I am who I am. Then they slither in their wisdom from this book. So then me, my my who I, I who I am, my body and flesh, and my wisdom get kicked out of my garden, the garden of peace, and then an entity is ruling over me. From there, they are putting words of fear, subservient, subservience, death, and algorithms of pain to kill and destroy and fear and dread all throughout this book. They unawarely have made us Pharaoh by putting the serpent in and then kicking it out and saying it's going to grovel over the flesh because if the wisdom is groveling over the flesh, that means it's all over us. And if the dragon is the Pharaoh, that means they're turning the beginning wisdom into a dragon. So then you go to Aaron, who is the, because Noah's the dragon and manifests to killing everything off the flesh. Which means he's the one that's teaching us. And if you read Noah's words, his algorithms of destruction, and he tore the covenant apart in this book. So then you go even further, Aaron. You go read Aaron if you want to after Moses says, I can't talk to you, for you. Because Moses is the one bringing the Ten Commandments. So everything else is from Aaron. He takes it and tries to plague Pharaoh, which is us. Then he creates an algorithm where we're hardening our hearts, so we're not going to listen. And we're going into the wilderness of religion for three days, which then manifests into 3,000 years because Peter wrote with the word, a day is but a thousand years to who I am. I hope people can understand this. Because from the time Moses was dug up from the 1500s, which all the Semitic people and Egyptians and all of them have this, they have made this into a 3,000 year prophecy of destruction. Because of Aaron and the Semitic people and, and Semitic Hebrews before that, the Hyksos. So I am removing this curse and putting it where it needs to be. The dragon is the pharaohs, the actual pharaohs, because I am who I am and they are who they are. And it's their wisdom that's been creeping into the mind since the beginning. So mean Narmer, who is Noah, because Pharaoh and Noah are the same thing. Take off the prefix. So when me and Narmer conquered all of Babylon and Canaan and did all that, I will hide my face in the field and go build a city to the east, Canaan. Now Noah, who's pretending to be Cain, is running all through the field, destroying everything off the field. So now there's no other gods. Mayat is being spread throughout the world. So then all of a sudden, uh-oh, Babylon has all these L's and Enkin and Lil and all this other stuff. They go raid the Indus Valley. So then Brahma appears. All this foolishness appears. They take the garment, spread it all through Canaan and all this other stuff. So now Malek and Brahma and Enki and Elil and Baal and the Egyptian gods are all mixing in together because of Brahma's meat. The people of Brahma who were once Babylonian and Canaan, Babylonian and Assyrian and in this valley and Persian, mixing all the way up to Canaan and in Egypt, invading Egypt and creating the Hyksos or the Hebrews. Right. And they're spreading it all back around. Um, with the moon. So a great sign appeared in the heart, a woman with the sun who had the light. So I'm going to say something. Don't get offended. But this is basically the woman, Moses, wife, who circumcised the child's heart, uh, foreskin and put it on the feet of Moses. She stood on Moses, right? The sun. So this is like Joshua or Kenneton. They had the sun or the light. With the moon, the the um the law, which is the Ten Commandments, right? He brought back the Aten, a Kenneton, <laughs> and he circumcised who I am, and is the salvation of YHV, salvation of who I am. Hope you guys are paying attention. Yeha, Yeha Shu, Yeshua, with the moon under the feet, the Ten Commandments, and the twelve stars, which is really the twelve tribes, if you see the flint knife that I put at the end of it. Um, she was pregnant and gave birth and was about to give birth. Then another sign appeared in the heart, an enormous red dragon, the pharaoh, and all his algorithms, and all these people's stories and buffoonery, mean armor, came since the beginning, or Noah, with the seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns on his head. So he had the seven commandments, and then he had ten horns, the whole covenant, so he used the seven commandments as horns, kill people that don't follow the law, and then 
the other seven or the Ten Commandments, basically, which he used for himself. It swept a third of the prophets out the sky. Or if you look at this even deeper, they take the Ten Commandments and put the Lord God there. So now the first three commandments have obey the Lord God instead of who I am, the Most High. Right. See what they do there. And then the woman, the dragon stood in front of the woman. So now he's the law, the Lord God. Bow to me or die. Who does that? The Pharaoh who started this. And but if you look even further, me and Narma was just the king at first. The Hyksos came in and created Pharaohs and made them like a god to the people. And that'll be what Aaron comes in. I'll explain that in a second. The dragon stood in front of the woman who was about to give birth so that it might devour her child the moment it was born. Gershom. She gave birth to a son, a male child who will rule the nations with an iron scepter. Her child was snatched up to who I am, to the throne. The woman fled into the wilderness. This is basically talking about um, what happens with Elijah and John now. To a place prepared for her by who I am, where she might be taken care of for 1260 days. So the true people were basically supposed to be eating the unleavened and learning. But all these religious men wrote 613 mitzvahs with the Ark of the Covenant, which is the mark of the beast, 616. So these, so give me a second. Then war broke out in the heart. Michael, remember when Michael was contending with the body of Moses, Elijah and his I, I, um, below, I sent Michael to contend with the Persians. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? The Old Testament, but he was not strong enough. And his angels fall back, but he was not strong enough and they lost their place in the heart. And the great dragon was hurled down um, and was hurled down. So now look after Zoroaster. Remember all these prophets coming forth? They talk about you kings and you men are in power and they fought the kings of the earth now. The great dragon was hurled down and the ancient serpent called who I'm not, who leads the whole world astray. He was hurled to the flesh and his angels with him. Then I heard a loud voice in the heart say, now comes the salvation and the power and the kingdom of who I am. I am sal gracious salvation and the authority of his Messiah for the accuser of our brothers and sisters who accuses them before who I am day and night has been hurled down. They triumphed over him by the blood of of the Ten Commandments and its people, the prophets, right? Remember? And by the word of their testimony, they did not love their lives so much to shriek from the death of the from death of Pharaoh's kingdom, which manifested into literal death for people who were martyred. Therefore rejoice, you hearts, and you who dwell in them. But woe to you who live by the flesh and by these deep books, because the death who I am not has gone down to you. He is filled with fury because he knows not the time is short. When who I am not saw that he had been hurled to the flesh, he pursued the woman who had given birth to the male child. So this is basically saying when Babylon came in and attacked Israel or Judah or whatever it's called. But now what are the prophets doing? They're fighting back the kings of Babylon, Persia, Greece and Rome. The woman was given two wings so that she might fly to a place prepared in the wilderness, the prophets, where she would be taken care of. So this is like Joseph running into Egypt um, with the word times and a times times out of the serpent's reach. Then from his mouth, the serpent spewed water like a river. Noah. So Noah started any of this, which led to Aaron, the pharaohs. So me and Armour did spread this. And then once Babylon and all of them spread to Egypt, then this happens. Let me show you. This is what I was talking about in another video. So after Moses or after all these people are being flooded through the earth, um, there was a basket made. Look at that like Ham, the people of Ham um, creating a basket and pushing it down the river. Um, until you get to this time. Amos. When Amos comes. He draws from the rivers, right? And um, when he draws from the rivers, what ends up happening is um, you have people after. Now, you guys keep talking about amen, and it's not from Egypt. I'm telling you it is. This man, Amenhotep, and in three tub Moseses, um, three times did you deny the word, they used Pharaoh's garment or Moses' garment and turned Pharaoh's into God on earth. And so basically, this is Aaron coming forth and stealing a representation of that. And the one who drew from the rivers, I might have said in a video or two that that was Aaron, 
but that was a mistake of mine. That's essentially Moses drawing from the rivers. And so um, Moses, that's in the story, is representing what's happening, what's, what the covenant did to him. The Egyptian driver, woman drew it from the rivers. And then once it got older, right, once Moses was mature in age, the Ten Commandments, what happened? He slew the Egyptian man that was hurting the Hebrews, the Pharaoh. But then they took his garment, Aaron, the other Pharaohs after him, and started to enslave again. But the flesh helped the woman by opening the mouth and swallowing the river that the dragon had spewed out of the mouth. Then the dragon was enraged at the woman and went off to wage war against her and the rest of the offspring who keep who I am's commandments and keep their testimony about who I am, who keep the command, keep the commandments and keep the testimony about who I am. So now this is Aaron. The dragon stood on the shore of the sea and the beast coming out of the sea. It had ten horns and seven heads. So he used the ten commandments and he used the seven commandments to strike. So if you pay attention to the Pharisees, what was they doing? They was trying to kill in the name of Moses. They was trying to stone the adulterers and kill people that worked on the Sabbath, do all the other stuff. Murder for the law, which is what the Pharaohs was doing. Um, and on each head had a blasphemous name. So basically, to kill for the law. See what I'm saying? If you break the law, they kill the seven commandments. The beast I saw resembled a leopard. So this is Greece and had feet of those of the bear, Persia, and had a mouth of a lion, Babylon, and a dragon. Um, and the dragon. So I'm going to explain something. One of the heads is Babylon, the lion. One of the heads is Persia, the bear. Four of the heads with four heads is Greece because it's split four ways. And then the dragon and then the dreadful beast is like the dragon itself, um, and it has a head. And his, the dragon gave the beast his power and his authority and great authority. And one of the heads of the beast seemed to have a fatal wound, um, and the wound was healed. This is John coming out of the wilderness talking about, um, I'm bringing the sword into the world because he almost tore Rome off with murder. But then it was healed when the Roman Catholic Church created Roman Catholicism and started killing for the word again. The whole world was filled with wonder and followed the beast. People worshipped the dragon because he had given authority to the beast. Um, and they had also worshipped the beast see, to murder for the law and enslavement, the pharaohs and pagan gods. Who was like the beast who could wage war against him? The beast was given a mouth to utter proud words and blasphemies and to exercise authority for 42 months, which is the 1260 years, until um, William Tyndale reformed the stuff and wrote the Bible. It opened its mouth to blaspheme who I am and to slander his name and my dwelling and for those who live in the heart. It was given power to wage war against my holy people and to conquer them. And it was given authority over every tribe, people, language, language and nation. And all inhabitants of the flesh will worship the beast and all names who have not been written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And so basically, if you notice this, then what happened? Those four nations came and destroyed um, who were slain from the creation of the world. Whoever has ears, the spirit and the word, the Ten Commandments, whoever has ears, let them hear. If anyone go into captivity, they will. It's to go into captivity, into captivity, they will go. So if they want to follow this foolishness, let them and the world and their religions. If anyone is to be killed with the word or the sword, basically saying spiritual death, living by Pharaoh still, then let them do what they're going to do. This calls for patience and endurance and faithfulness on who I am's people, the beast of the flesh, who was brought forth by Peter, Paul, who was brought forth by Samuel, his kings and Peter and Paul. And it spoke like the dragon to kill for the law, to destroy for the law, subservience, fear, wisdom of destruction and turmoil. Then I saw a second beast coming out of the flesh. It had two horns like a lamb and spoke like a dragon. It exercised all the authority of the first beast authority of the first beast on its behalf and made the flesh and its inhabitants worship the beast jesus christ whose fatal wound had been healed they turned john's spirit into a pagan god well the spirit of all the christ the whole body of the christ because they talk about the prophets and elijah and the Torah and all that it performed great signs even causing fire to come down and if you read acts that's what peter and paul did i'm telling you they did in front of all the gentiles and they was told not to preach to the gentiles and not to leave jerusalem but to be a witness um, down from the heart to the flesh and full view of the people. 
because of the signs it was given power to perform to perform on behalf of the first beast it deceived the inhabitants of the whole flesh jesus christ is the lord god allah and god is the lord god hashem all these pagan gods it ordered them to set up an image and honor so i'm gonna tell y'all something the pope wrote this book i keep telling y'all which was perpetuated by the english the eighth beast jesus christ they took noah and its inhabitants the whole book the bible and turned it into pure pagan worship and made people idol all these men all their gods the second piece was given power to give breath to the image of the first beast paganism and to kill for the law so that it could speak and cause all who refused to worship the image to be killed by the so basically like to die in spiritual death they're perpetuating the curse from at, since the beginning the beginning wisdom from these religions it also forced all people great and small the roman catholic church and the protestant church killed everybody who didn't worship and not only from physical death they basically spiritually killed anybody and made them worship a pagan god to receive the mark on the right hand and their forehead so this isn't a physical thing instead of having the seal of who i am they have the seal of babylon religion so that they cannot buy or sell unless they had the mark which is in the name of the beast of his name let he who understands let the person who has insight calculate the number of beasts because it's not 666 it's 616 it's 613 mitzvahs with the ark of the covenant perpetuated all the way through time and now even if you go to judaism where they say go to the noahides we follow aaron's law yeshua you see what i'm saying they're playing in a, a cursed book they're playing then i looked and there before me was a land so this is basically saying this was talking about what happened to the body of everybody that sang the song of moses then i looked and there before me was the lamb or really the word and the spirit since the beginning on mount zion and within and with him 144,000 who had the name of who i am written on their foreheads and i heard the sound from the heart like a roar of rushing waters and a loud pearl of thunder one moment please the sound i heard was like that of the harpists playing their harps and they sang a, no, a new song before who i am and before the four living creatures um the new christians catholics babyloni uh jews and islamists and their elders no one could learn the song except the hundred forty four thousand i'm sorry or the first four commandments i left in this body and this at the end you'll see what i'm talking about the ten commandments who have redeemed from the flesh these are those who do not defile themselves with with the flesh and the other teachings of foolishness for they remain virgins they follow who i am wherever he goes they were purchased wherever i go they were purchased from among mankind and offered please help who i'm not cry that's why I said I don't want to be y'all's king. It's a blessing and a curse at the same time. They were from among mankind and offered as first fruits to who I am and of the Lamb. No lie was found in their mouths, and they are blameless. The three angels, the first three commandments. Then I saw an angel flying in midair, and he had the eternal gospel to proclaim. Um, don't put no gods before who I am. For those who live on the flesh... Every nation, tribe, and language, and people, he said in a loud voice, Fear who I am and give glory, because the hour of the judgment has come. Worship only him who made the heart and the earth and the sea and the springs of water. A second angel following said, Worship no idol, um, or yeah, no gods and no idols. A second angel followed, um, Do not bow down to them, for I am jealous and will not tolerate your affection for other gods. Do not worship them, for I am jealous like a husband over its wife. Fallen, fallen is Babylon and her foolishness, the dragon from the beginning, which made all the nations drink from the Talmud, the Bible, and the Quran. Because the Quran it came after the Bible. I mean, the Quran came after the Torah and the Bible and stuff. And what I'm trying to tell you all is they have corrupted it, put pagan God's names and stuff in there instead of I am who I am. For maddening wine with her adulteries. The third angel followed them said. Do not take who I am in vain. Do not take my name in vain. If anyone worships. 
the beast and its image and receives its mark on their forehead or their hand, they too will drink from the wine of who I am, which has been poured in full strength in a cup of wrath. I will tread the winepress. They will be tormented with the burning sulfur in the presence of who I am and my angels. And so the word and the spirit and the smoke of their torment will rise forever and ever. There will be no rest day and night for those who worship the beast and its image or anyone who receives the mark of its name. This calls for patience and endurance on behalf of who I am and my people to remain faithful to who I am. Then I heard a voice from the heart say, write this, blessed are the dead who die and who I am from now on. So blessed are those who die to Pharaoh's kingdom and are born and who I am. Yes, says the spirit, they will rest from their labor and their deeds will follow them. Harvesting the flesh and trampling the winepress. I looked and there before me was a white cloud and seated on the cloud was like the son of man. The first three commandments again. With a crown of gold on the head and a sharp sickle in the hand. Then another angel came out to the temple of who I am and called in a loud voice to him who was sitting on the cloud. Take your sickle and reap because the time has reaped has to come for the harvest of the flesh is ripe. So he who was seated on the cloud swung his sickle over the flesh and the earth was harvested. Another angel came from the temple of the heart and he too had a sharp sickle. Still another angel who had charge of fire came from the altar and a loud voice and called to him with a sharp sickle. Take your sharp sickle and gather the clusters of grapes from the flesh's vine because its grapes are ripe. The angel swung his sickle on the flesh, gathered its grapes, and threw them into a great winepress of who I am. And they were trampled in the winepress outside of the, and the blood flowed out of the winepress. <laughs> to JV6 and completion. That's funny. With the, on the sixth day, bringing... So it's basically a thousand plus six hundred, which is symbolic for completion on the sixth day. I and with the six phrases, which is also seven. But the angel told me to keep that sealed up and not to give Muhammad too much reverence or they'll worship him. Seven angels with the seven plagues. I saw in the heart another great marvelous sign. Seven angels with the seven last plagues, last because with them who I am's wrath is completed, and I saw what looked like a sea of glass glowing from the fire and standing behind it beside the sea those who have been victorious over the beast's image and over the number a number of its name they held harps not following all them freaking misfits in religion given to them by who i am they sang a song of who i am the servant moses and the lamb who i am servant moses and the lamb uh give me one second sorry about that a great, great and marvelous your deeds. I am who I am. Just just and true are your ways. The king of the nations who will not fear you and bring glory to your name for you alone. For you alone are holy. All nations will come and worship before you for your righteousness. Acts have been revealed. After this, I saw in the heart the temple that is the tabernacle of the covenant of the law. And it was opened and out of the temple came seven angels with seven plagues. So this is basically saying those first six angels that I was talking about, it's like the first six phrases and then the seventh and then the um, seventh angel do not take who I am that brings rest. And then the other seven angels, the seven commandments. Uh, after I looked and saw in the heart, the temple that is the tabernacle of who I am. Out came the seven angels with the plagues. They were dressed in clean, shining linen, and wore golden sashes around their chest, the seven beautiful laws. Then one of the four living creatures gave the seven angels seven golden bowls filled with the wrath of who I am, who lives forever and ever. So once you get them, it basically burns off the foolishness of the flesh. And the temple was filled with the smoke and the glory of who I am and from my power. And no one could enter into the temple until the seven plagues of the seven angels were completed. And so this is basically these. This is just another way of saying what the Ten Commandments is going to do over and over, which is a, a, in actuality. Once I really paid attention to it, it's like two sevens. It's two angels. It's the two beginning phrases and the six 
seven. That's the two beginning phrases and the seven commands after that, or the five commands after that. Um, they were really compressed into three. But, you know, and then um, then the seven commandments after that. And if you put thou shalt not kill and rape together, it's another seven. Or if you look at it how from before, the four plus the eight, it becomes the twelve tribes plus the two phrases. Then I looked and heard a loud voice from the temple saying to the seven angels, go and pour out the seven bowls of who arms wrath on the flesh. Um, and I've already said what the plagues were and stuff. So, and so basically I'm just going to explain the beast real quick that comes out the purple beast. It's the purple beast is the dragon, the beast and the false prophet all together. And so basically it's basically saying that, um, I guess I could read it real quick. Here we go. Um, I will show you the punishment of the great prostitute who sits by many waters. And I'm telling you this living out in real time with they gave their power and authority to the beast. All you atheists, all you Bible haters, all you, when I say Bible hater, I'm not saying you're bad. I'm saying like all of you guys that are burning the Bible alive, you're refining the book. You're doing what the end is telling you to do. And then the new judges will come forth. I'm not saying y'all are the judges. I'm saying the angels in your heart, but all who play around with this stuff and don't find rest for real and play, you're literally like just destroying yourself. I think. Um, with her, the kings of the flesh committed adultery and the inhabitants of the whole flesh were intoxicated by her wine of her adulteries. Then the angel carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. And I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast. So the woman is the dragon because if she's sitting on the beast, she's the one that goes to the rivers and resurrects the beast. And so at first it's the Pharaoh, but then remember it goes over to the rivers and resurrects something beginning with Babylon. So then the dragon is Babylon resurrecting this stuff. And then the beast are the four nations. And then what the four nations created was the Jesus Christ, Catholicism and Protestantism, which went around killing people for like 2000 years. The woman dressed in purple and scarlet and was glittering with gold, precious stones. And it's also symbolic of the, the who you are or the who I am. If it's mixed into all these different religions, listening after men's words, religions, words, their teachings, their lies, their books, their creeds, their denominations, then leads the flesh to become a beast and a psychopath and an enslaver on behalf. And then you testify on behalf of this book or these religions and lie over and over and over, spreading pagan gods, murder and destruction. Living in a perpetual curse of death since the beginning of kings and pharaohs. Um, with her precious stones and pearls, she held a golden cup. I mean, y'all are worth, even if you go in Catholicism, they're worshiping Mother Marys and angels and pagan holy grails and crosses and stuff. It's like, come on, dude. Are you serious? The name written on her forehead was a mystery. Babylon, the great mother of prostitutes. Eve, the flesh of the pharaohs and the oppressors since the beginning, creating buffoonery. Because in order to say Cain or mean armor, that was the flesh of a man, right? Giving birth to something. I saw that woman was drunk with the blood of my holy people, the blood of those who bore the testimony of who I am. When I saw her, I was greatly astonished. Then the angel said to me, why are you astonished? The people who are inside of her will burn her alive with fire anyway, are they not? Now they're all giving all the power to Jesus Christ who is burning everything off the vine and Allah and Judaism. And then all those are being burned away by atheism and people with actual logic and common sense and not even always in a bad way. People are saying all the time, well, I believe in Jesus and different stuff like that, but he's not their God, basically making him an angel again. And even making him an angel, you're basically... All you're doing is taking the body of the prophets and the apostles and putting it all into one body with the red wine. That's basically what they're doing. So, I mean, it's like you're worshiping one man when all of them have something to say. Um, the beast which you saw, which once was, now is not, and yet will come up from the abyss, will go into destruction. The inhabitants of the flesh whose names have not been written in the book of the creation of who I am, astonished when they see the beast will be astonished when they see the beast because it was once was now is not and yet will come this calls for a mind with understanding 
the seven head understanding and wisdom. The seven heads are the hills, the seven commandments, because Aaron took Moses and created buffoonery and buffoon land. But before to take Moses, mean armor, if you look at the laws of Maya, the Ten Commandments are in there, minus the Ark, and to kill everybody who blasphemes, kills, and does all this other stuff. They're rewriting the law with the covenant and destroying themselves. Um, there are also seven kings, five have fallen, one is, and the other is yet to come. And so, if you pay attention to this, when John came, it was the fifth time period. The sixth is yet to come. When Muhammad was to fight in all this and William Tyndale and then the seventh or five kings are fallen. One is right now. Um, and that yet has that to come. And so like, remember John was the fifth, like I told y'all, like the fifth time period or whatever. Then Muhammad was to come battle the Pope and all of them, the sixth. And then here I am battling the seventh, which is the eighth beast. Jesus Christ. Um, and he will only remain for a little while. For and now he is not, and is the eighth king, Jesus Christ, an idol. All the passengers combined turned into a pagan god instead of following it righteously. When I say passengers, I'm talking about the ark that even tried to help from Noah's flood or the pharaohs and Cain. The ten horns you saw are the ten kings who have not yet received power. So even if you look at the spiritually, this is another way of saying the Ten Commandments, which were kings, and they use the seven horns, which is um the other seven commandments. And so if you really, really pay attention to that, what's the last commandment? Don't take who I am in vain. They took who I am in, or keep the day of rest holy. They took that in vain. And then created Jesus Christ, the pagan God. Um, they will have one purpose and will give their power and authority. But, oh, who have not received a kingdom. But who for one hour will receive authority as kings along with the beast. So the Ten Commandments destroying instead of giving freedom. And they're treating it like a physical religion. They have one purpose and will give their power and authority to the beast. They will wage war against who I am. But who I am will triumph over them because he is Lord of Lord and kings of kings. I am Lord of Lord and king of kings and who I am is the covenant of freedom. And with him will be his called chosen and faithful followers. Then the angel said to me, the waters you saw where the prostitute sits are peoples, multitudes, nations and languages. The beast and the ten horns you saw will hate the prostitute. So then look what happened now. Um, what did the people do to all pharaohs and stuff in the Semitic time period or around the time period when the Bible and the and the New Testament came out or when the time of the Torah, Old Testament, New Testament came out? They destroyed the pharaohs. Right. So they killed Babylon or the pharaohs. But she lived on through spirit as Babylon. Then what happens? They was killing people and prophets that tried to speak on behalf of this because of religion. Right. So they tried to burn her with fire. And then ended up destroying themselves for who I am has a place in their hearts. And now look what they're doing in this time period, burning away all this religion and bringing a new way, the new kingdom. Until who I am words are fulfilled. The woman you saw is the great city who rules over the kings of the flesh. Um, And I don't really want to read this part because you guys can read this part if you want. Threefold woe over Babylon, the first three commandments, how they tear Babylon apart once you get it for real, for real. Um, but I'm not trying to read that because people are already trying to destroy people in religion. And if I put certain words in people's hearts, it's going to maybe cause a firestorm and you see what happened with Elijah. So you guys can read the fall of Babylon and all that stuff. I'd rather not read that because it's poetry <laughs> that could cause the flesh to go do certain things if they're led by me and not who I am. They're most, you know what I mean? So that's. Threefold hallelujah over it. The same thing. The <laughs> Now look at this. This is kind of prophetic. This is the seven commandments coming together or the Ark of the Covenant. The um, threefold woe, the first three, threefold hallelujah, the second three, 
and then the one who redeems it all. Do not take who I am in vain. <laughs> then in the heart, standing open, and there standing before me was a white horse, whose rider is called Faithful and True. With justice, he judges. And so if you pay attention, I said the first angels was Adam through Muhammad. But if you really pay attention, Adam fell and it needed to be redeemed. And then Ham after that started to build the foundation of the world. And so from that aspect, I am the return. I am the king of kings. And who I am is the Messiah of freedom for you all. And so in that aspect, I am faithful and true. But as I've told you all before, faithful and true is all of us, who we all are. It's basically the covenant getting inside and destroying Pharaoh's kingdom. And the heart opened up. And there before me, a white horse, whose rider is called Faithful and True. With justice he judges and wages war. His eyes are like a blazing fire, and on his head are many crowns. And the name written on him that no one knows he, but he himself. I am who I am. I am Yehanan. I am gracious salvation. And with this flint knife that I use like a flaming sword of justice, I will destroy the kings of the flesh. Not physically, but through the word and spirit. He is dressed in a robe dipped. He is dressed in a robe dipped in the blood of the prophets. He is dipped in a robe dipped in the blood of the judges, the prophets, and the apostles. And his name is the word of who I am. The armies of the heart were following him, riding on horses and dressed in fine linen, white and clean. Coming out of his mouth is a sharp, sharp sword with which to strike down the nations Gehenna Gehenna oh I am the return I am the fires oh this is real coming out of his mouth is the sharp store which, to strike down the nations he will rule them with an iron scepter he treads the winepress and the fury of who I am on his robe and his thigh has a name written on it I am the King of Kings, Lord of Lords. And I saw an angel standing in the sun who cried out, The sixth angel coming down from the sun. Jesus is not a God. I am who I am. I am. <gasps> oh! Calling to the birds of the midair, fighting the Pope for almost a thousand years or some change, until William Tindam came to fight. Come to gather together the great supper of who I am. The final supper. <laughs> so that you may eat the flesh of the kings and the generals. Not literally. I'm not a cannibal. Eating my flesh, drinking my blood. <laughs> but um, talking about spiritually saying destroy their teachings in the heart so that who I am can be mighty and not be a scaredy cat. But also be hum humble and kind and loving of horses and their riders and the flesh of of the people free slave great and small so it's basically saying the covenant comes in and destroys all that and makes you new then i saw the beasts of the kings of the flesh and their armies gathered together to wage war against the rider of the horse and his army but the beast was captured and with it the false prophet who were performing the signs on on its behalf peter and paul and samuel and all their kings with these signs and aaron and noah and with these signs deluded those who have received the mark of the beast when you see the rainbow <laughs> and worshiped its image the two of them were thrown alive into the refinery of the burning sulfur and the rest were killed so the torah the old testament and new testament refined from all the pagan gods and all the other buffoonery the spirits of subservience murder and death and now who i am eats from it like a king for a feast the Bible. I can read the Psalms, the songs, the Proverbs, the prophet. What do I want to read? And I could become powerful that day or whenever. It's who I am's kingdom. Who can rule over who I am? Does Job not say that when the fourth man, and I'll make you the fourth. <laughs> the rest were killed with the sword coming out of the mouth of the rider of the horse, um, the spirit. And the birds gorged themselves on the flesh. <sighs> I'm kind of like the horse. Is it not written? That I have the keys of death in the grave and the fourth horse who is like death to Pharaoh's kingdom, a dapple horse coming for Greece and everything it done. <laughs> this is so prophetic. I am the horse of faithful and true.
the t <laughs> the thousand years. And I saw an angel coming down of the heart, having the key and holding in it the great chain. For it sees the concepts of who I am not, the ancient serpent, who is who I am not, and bound him until completion. For he threw him into the abyss. I'm going to say something real quick. And sometimes he tries to come out, right? But who I am rains down the fire, like the fires that don't consume, begin to b build a Jerusalem from these words in this book. And then by the time I get older or wise, it's ultra instincts. A negative thought or something comes, it doesn't even affect me anymore. And if it does, it automatically goes away. Because I am faithful and true and I protect you. I am programmed into perfection. And so there's no more recollection. And there's only, only recognition, the keys and the fuel to the ignition that protect who I am. No longer being afraid of maleficence and fear and terror and dread and stories that feel like destruction and Cain in the head. Oh, if I have wishes or money, I am evil and I will be in pain. But don't take other people in vain. I am beautiful and I write the story. So let who I am walk into glory. And locked and sealed it over him to keep him from deceiving the nations anymore until the time of completion were ended. After that, he must be set free for a short time. And remember, I said at the end of the time of completion, when Nebuchadnezzar and all them <laughs> flee through the wilderness. I hope it's not to the end of the thousand years and 3000 AD for seven time periods, but it is what it is. But then so the name and the fire can be glorified in the future. So that way it could be proven that the name and the fires are that which is fires that don't consume, not burning witches like pagans from the Roman church and the English church. I saw thrones on which were seated who had been given authority to judge the new judges. There will be new judges. So the prophets carried the apostles for a long time once they came out of Egypt. But now let's see what the judges can do. <laughs> Joshua and the judges. And I saw the souls of those who had been. <sighs> Rest in peace, John the Baptist and all the apostles and prophets and everybody else. And their testimony for who I am because of the word of I am. They had not worshipped the beast or its image and not received the mark on their foreheads and their hands. They came into life and reigned with who I am for a thousand years. And the rest of the dead did not come into life until the completion because they didn't know how to fucking listen. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy are those who share in the first resurrection. The second death has no power over them. So when we die, I told you all, I'm like a fortress. A lot does not bother me, and if it starts to, who I am comes to defend my precious child, whom I love and guide forever. But they will be priests of who I am and of who, who they will be priests of I am and who I am and will reign with who I am for the, until the time of completion. The judgment of who I am not. Then when at the time of completion is ended. Who I am not will be released from the prison to go out and deceive the nations, the four corners of the flesh, Gog and Mogog. Now go read Genesis and Japheth's lineage. Go read Shem's lineage. Shem and Japheth tried to extend Noah and the Pharaoh's blessing and got this and are going to be removed because of it. They're false religions. Everybody keeps saying anti-Semitism because of the Jews. What they're doing is they're creating a religion, mind fucking everybody with it. And then what they're doing is they send a Noah and Aaron for Noah hides in the beast and everybody else who they can't control. Oh, we kind of believe in Yeshua. So worship that pagan God. No, here I am. Some about anti-Semitism. So they creep into the civilization, keep the covenant and are totally free and aren't afraid of religion. Then they torment the whole world with all their religions. After they torment the world with their religions, then say, oh, we're the holy righteous. Well, no, you're JPEG. You're Europeans. You were eating meat. And running around with cave paintings and all type of other foolishness until the Romans and the Greeks assimilated you and created whatever this is now, English. They, so the pharaohs, the Semitic foolishness in Islam. So Judea, the foolishness in Islam and Christianity, if you will, please. They marched across the breadth of the flesh and surrounded Huayim's people and the city and the loves. 
But who I am's fire came down from the heart and devoured them. And who I am not, who deceived them, was thrown into the lake of burning sulfur. You guys' own fire. That's why. Don't be afraid. You're the one that controls the fire, the refinery. Who I am was in the refinery. I didn't want to say this either at first, but who I am was in the refinery with Joshua, Elijah, and John the Baptist. And I rescued them from the torment of what other people was trying to burn them with. If that makes sense. So I pulled all these people, these nations out of hell and torment, gave them the most high and the power and allowed them to have the power again because they all control fire. Joshua's words became fire. Elijah, Elijah rained fire down and John the Baptist controlled water, which became the lake of fire. The judgment of who I am not. Then I saw a great white and Moses was the one that draws from the lake of fire. So that we can control this fire. Then I saw a great white throne. Um, and him who was seated on it. The flesh and the heart fled from the presence. And there was no place for them. And I saw who I am not. Great and small. So this is basically saying you and your conscience. Once you're the most high again. And can see all the stuff that comes to your mind. All your imaginations. Your world. Everything. You decide what is for who I am. You. And I saw who I'm not, great and small, standing before who I am. And the books were open. And another book was open. So now you all refine these books. You all judge. You all do that. But for who you are. Another book was open, which is called the book of life. Who I am. And who I'm not were judged according to what they had done. You see what I'm doing with this book when I read it? The stuff that's not for who I am, they are getting. Bye-bye. And the sea gave up who I'm not and that which were in it. And death and Hades gave up the death and those were in them so now you die to the old kingdom send everything that wasn't for you into the refinery with that bull crap and become who i am a new then death and hades were thrown into who i am uh thrown into the fire thrown up as a peace offering unto who i am so that i can live in peace and the lake of fire is the second death so then when you wake to pharaoh's awaken you refine all this other stuff and then come out new and you're not consumed because I am with thee. There you go. And the book of life was thrown into the lake of fire. The new heart and a new flesh. Then I saw a new heart and a new flesh. For the first heart and the first flesh had passed away. Adam. Because it was destroyed. Then the foundation from what hand built from till now was rebuilt. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem coming down from who I am in the hearts prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. I saw the new flesh of who I am once I was renewed. And I heard a loud voice from the heart saying, look, my dwelling place is now among the people and the clouds were removed and all this other stuff and the storm was over and who I am will dwell. There will be, there will be my people and who I am myself will be with them and be i am who i am will be with them he will wipe every tear from their eyes who i am will wipe every tear from their eyes there will be no more death from pharaoh's kingdom and religion or mourning or crying or however you want to take that because I, i've even said if the automatic nervous system is being programmed with the source code no one a lot of other people are teaching us to die including the beginning wisdom man will only live for 950 years noah says we only live for 120 years i am who i am I am against that foolishness. I am not the concepts of the world and Pharaoh and all those other men. I am life and who I am is living. I am that which is. All thoughts of death are undefined because I am life and who I am is living. It's like a number divided by zero. You can't take away from zero. So it's undefined. And anything you, you create is destructive and harmful and painful and spreading destruction and slavery and torment through the spirit or physically. It's who I am not and will be refined by one day by... Life with common sense. I am eternal life and I am that which is. I am sorry for everything I've said and done. And I am the new covenant that I am renewing. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, write this down for these are the words are trustworthy and true. He said to me, it is done. I am the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty, I will give water without cause 
from the spring of the water of life. Those who are victorious will inherit all this, and I will be who I am, and they will be who they are. But the cowardly, and they will be of who I am. But the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexually immoral, and those who practice magic arts, all of this basically goes hand in hand with keep who I am holy, do not commit adultery with who I am, and do not create vain, stupid, enslaving, sexually sodomizing, because they used to rape people and cults and murder children and burn them on fire and all type of stuff, which manifested spiritually as time went on when none of us knew what our forefathers did and they switched the words up and kept their gods in it. They will be consigned to the fiery lake of the refinery, and this is the second death. So basically, when people die and are saying, oh, I need a priest. Oh, pray for me. I'm, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on. Oh, oh, and they are caught in that foolishness until they actually die and waste their life away and terrified. Um, one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls of the seven last plagues came to me and said, come, I will show you the bride, the wife of who I am. And she carried me away in the spirit to a mountain great and high and showed me the holy city. Jerusalem coming down from the heart from who I am it shone with the glory of who I am and its brilliance was like that of a very precious jewel like a jasper clear as crystal it had a great and high wall with 12 gates and 12 the 12 judges and with 12 angels at the gates and on the gates were written 12 names names of the 12 tribes of Israel there were the three gates on the east the three gates on the north and the three gates on the south, the 12 judges and tribes, the 12 apostles and the 12. Um, prophets, I'm sorry. So basically the Torah and the judges. So Joshua and the judges, um, the Old Testament and the New Testament. And on them were names of the 12 apostles of who I am. And the angel who walked with me had a measuring rod of the gold to measure the city, its gates and its walls. The city was laid out like a square as long as it was wide. He measured the city with the rod and found it to be 12,000 stadia. It's length as high as long. Um, and the measuring wall using its measurements was 144 cubits. Holy shit, this can't... One second, because sometimes, like I told you, I see prophecy and it tweaks me out sometimes. Son of Ham, is that who I am? Tortured by literature, condensed to a can. Completed by fate's signature, it's time to carry out the plan. Twelve more plus twelve from before. Call this man crazy if you wish. I'll bring 144 more with the same phrases in a new dish. Will these outweigh the rest, or will I chisel away until there's nothing left? Holy <sighs> The wall was made of jasper, the city of pure gold, pure as glass. The foundations of the walls were decorated with every kind of precious stone. I want to guys I want to show you guys a pretty picture. Um Real quick. Because to me, this is beautiful. These gems, to me, they're so pretty. Just the beauty of the colors of it all. You know what I mean? And so, of course, it's symbolic for something. But... That's pretty to me. I think somebody, here we go. Somebody actually, those colors are real beautiful. So yeah, um, that's pretty. I did not see a temple because who I am, because I am who I am and who I am are its temple. The city does not need sun or moon to shine on it because the glory of who I am gives it light. And who I am, the glory of I am who I am gives it light, and who I am is its lamp. The nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring their splendor into it. 
on no day will its gates ever be shut. I am for all, for there will be no night there. The glory and honor of the nations will be brought into it. Nothing impure will ever enter it. There will be no more curse, nor will anyone who does what is shameful or deceitful, but only those who are written in Who I Am's Book of Life. Thank you, everybody. I'd like to thank you all for enjoying my story. I'd like to thank you all for enjoying his story. And enjoy life.